All right, let's take a look at quadratic equations. Okay, so these can seem complicated. We're gonna go over a few examples, hopefully uh, simplify it for you a little bit. Okay, so when here's our first equation. It says x squared minus 8x plus 15 equals zero. Okay, so with a quadratic equation, which is what this is, is we always want to see everything on the left side equals zero. That's the first thing we're looking for. Okay, so in this case, they've already done that for us, um, so we're good to go there. Um, but in some other examples, we'll have to get it set up so that it equals zero. Okay, so what you're gonna have here is two sets of parentheses, right? And when you multiply them together, the answer needs to equal zero. Okay, so we'll have an x here, the next here, okay? And, and then we're gonna have a number here and a number here for when we multiply it out, it equals that. Okay, so we have two things to look at. These two numbers are going to have to, when we multiply them together, be a product of 15, meaning when you multiply them together, we get 15. And when you add up the, these two numbers together, it's gonna have to result in a negative eight. Okay, so with 15, there's really only two ways. Here's the ways we can get to 15. One times 15 equals 15, right? But when you add one and 15 together, you get 16, and we need to get negative eight. Okay, so that one's no good. Um, three times five equals 15, right? But when we add three and five together, we get eight. We need negative eight, okay? So five and three would be the same thing, right? Five times three instead of three times five. So we're looking at that. Five times three equals 15. But again, five plus three is eight. So that doesn't work, okay? We only have one option left, which is what if we made them both negative, right? Negative three times negative five equals 15. Remembering that when you multiply two negatives together, that gives us a positive. And negative three plus negative five equals negative eight. Okay, so this is the one we want. Okay, and so if we look at that, then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna plug in these two numbers up here. X minus three, X minus five. Okay, let's get rid of this. There's some room to write some stuff out. If uh, adding these up to negative eight was confusing, remember like with negatives, if we have a number line, okay? Like if you have, here's zero, there's negative three, um, there's negative eight. Okay, so we start at negative three. If negative three minus five means we go this way, less than five gets us to negative eight. So negative three minus five, would be negative eight. Okay, so here's our formula now, right? And then we, let's distribute this out and make sure it works, right? That gets us this, right? So when you're multiplying, we go like this times this, x times x, x squared, yes? Okay, so then this times this, x times negative five, right? That's negative five x. Still with me, right? Negative three times x, minus three x, negative three times negative five, plus 15 equals zero. Okay, and then we can combine like terms, right? We have x squared still by itself, negative five x minus three x, negative eight x, plus 15 equals zero. Okay, so what we did works, yes? Okay, now, when you're given an answer choice, we've done all the hard work here, is what you're looking for is what number does x have to be so that in this parentheses, we get a zero, right? And if you have a zero here, it doesn't even matter what's over here. Zero times that anything is zero, and so that would be the answer choice. So here, if we put x equals three, three minus three is zero, 
So your answer solution is going to be 3, 3 minus 3 is 0, and 5, because 5 minus 5 is 0. Okay, right? so you'll have, when you're looking at your test, you're going to have four answer choices, and all of them are going to be something like this, where you have like x equals 3 comma 5, x equals 4 comma 7, or whatever, right? So this is the correct answer choice. If you plug in either of these two numbers into this equation up here, we will be left with zero, okay? And that's how we do it. If you want proof, okay, so let's say we took three, right? So if we plugged in three to this original equation up here, then we would have three squared minus eight times three plus 15, right? So that three squared is nine minus eight times three is 24 plus 15, okay? Nine minus 24 is negative 15 plus 15 equals zero, right? You would get the same thing if you use five, right? So that just proved that when we put, plug in three to this, we end up with zero. Kind of seems like a long explanation when you first hear it. You have to really hear that long explanation so it all makes sense. And I'm sure it still can seem confusing. This is why we're going to do another one. Okay, what happens with this? We have x squared equals 12 minus x. Okay, so if you remember, we could get everything over here on the left side to equal zero, and then we'll solve it just like we just did the previous one. Okay, so subtract 12, add x, right? So there's nothing left over here. That's going to cancel out everything, right? And then we'll do the same over here. Subtract 12, add x, okay? So that will look like x squared plus x minus 12 equals zero. Okay. Now, if you can remember how we set this up previously, then we have like these, these two parentheses equals zero. And on the left part of each, we just have an x. Okay. Now, we have this number negative 12, right? And so we need the two numbers, they're going to go here to multiply to negative 12 and add up to one, right? Because x, I could just as easily have a one here, my ugly one. One x and x are exactly the same, right? So we need to figure out when we multiply numbers, what can we multiply that gets negative 12 and adds to one, okay? So if it's negative, that means one's gonna be negative, one's gonna be positive, okay? So what if it was negative 12 times one, that equals negative 12, but negative 12, plus one is negative 11, so that's no good, okay? Um, what about um, if we're looking at, what if it was six and two? So what if it was negative six times two, that equals negative 12, okay? Negative six plus two is negative four, so closer, but still no good. Um, and then our others would be uh, like negative four and three, negative four times three equals negative 12. Negative four plus three equals negative one. So we're getting closer, but we need it to actually equal one, right? So that should tell us, well, what about four and negative three? That equals negative 12. Four plus negative three is one. So there's, there's our answer, right? So that's what we're gonna want to put in here on four and negative three, so that means Four is a positive, negative three, negative. Let's try and get a little more room to work with. Okay. Eventually, like that stuff gets really easy, but take your time when you're trying to figure out which ones multiply to this answer, but add up to that. Okay, so x plus four, so let's make sure we did it right, right? Um, so that equals x squared, x times x is x squared, 
x times negative 3, negative 3x, 4 times x, 4x, so plus 4x, 4 times negative 3, negative 12. Okay, then we'll combine them. x squared, negative 3x, plus 4x, plus x, minus 12, equals 0. Right, that's what we had right there. Same thing. Okay, so we set it up right. Okay. Whoops, erase too much. Um, so we had x plus 4 times x minus 3. Okay, so now all that's left equals 0. Okay, all that's left is the plug in. Right, so for this one, to get the, this one to equal zero, negative four, negative four plus four equals zero, which means the equation will equal zero, okay. Okay, negative four is a good answer, and then what's the other answer? Three, right, because three minus three is zero. Now would be our solution. X equals negative four, and X equals three. Okay, we're going to get two more still, All right? This is probably our longest video. Um, 4x squared equals 64. Okay, so on this one, um, all we have to do right now here is just get it down to x squared, All right? So this one's quite a bit simpler. Divided by four. That's a 16, okay? 64 divided by four is 16. x squared equals 16, right? It seems like you're comparable with the square roots, right? So now we gotta square root this guy on both sides, right? And x equals square root of 16. Try to remember when you see something like this, so you know that square root of 16, it equals 4, but it can also equal negative 4, right? So your solution is going to be, right, negative 4 times negative 4 is 16, right? So that's an important one to remember, that it's both 4 and negative 4.